Welcome everyone. You are tuning in to Engaging Walk. My name is Drake. And my name is Ruby. We believe in the power of walking together and talking together. It's a simple act to stay connected and movement is key. Okay, so this week we're going to continue on with our uh, family norms. So the first episode was a lot about establishing and cultivating your family norms. The second episode uh, from this week was, a, or earlier this week was on... Um, implementing those family norms inside in your family and having like your mission statements and having all these things ready which is really really helpful and then now we're going to get into that third phase of family norms which is protecting your family norms through boundaries and establishing and maintaining those standards Mm -hmm. so this is a really critical part of your family norms because you know if you spend all this time establishing your family norms and you don't maintain the standards and you don't have boundaries set up then people are going to come in in your family and just you know derail it change it um you know sometimes those changes can be good sometimes they're not so we're going to talk about that that's going to be today's episode all right so for our engaging walk we have been doing a lot more exploring of our home area which is el cajon it's a little bit more east of like san diego proper Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so we've been finding a lot of uh, nice like boba shops, a lot of nice places for dog parks for boba, no pun intended for our dog. And um, the scenery here is a lot more like mountainous um, than where we originally were at, which is a lot more like closer to the beach. But yeah, so that was our engaging walk. And um, so let's get let's dive into the content. So mm-hmm. the topic again, maintaining those uh, family norms boundaries, standards, and um, yeah, so what are your first immediate thoughts about that, uh, my lovely, lovely wife, Ruby? <laughs> I think you mentioned very good points where like, you know, um, first we establish the norm and then um, have a step to implement it, but then I think it's also a critical point to have, um, to make it, man- to maintain it and then, you know, moving forward with that because Family start with a couple, not with the children, you know, and um, to have um, two people on board with that and constantly moving forward with that. And um, as, especially, especially for us, um, I remember like those, you know, beginning of the um, the wedding, after the, the wedding, you know, we start engaging our, uh, our life together and we start seeing, you know, commons area also like difference area but also like um culturally culturally different from our upbringing and um that is where i feel like oh wow that is it can, it can be frustrated but it can be uh excited it's at the same time exciting at the same time because um whatever that we try to implement is a theory mm-hmm. now the step is how you protect and maintain it it's more like a practical step when you bring a theory into reality and you can you can tailor it is it working or is not and is you know so for me is this uh, episode I'm excited because it's it's very practical and um just like um the first one we have is communicate um honestly with each other and um yeah that's for our like our family mission statement uh-huh. is that we were going to communicate honestly honestly with each other um that we were going to choose love over fear, maintain and choose that connection, justice, and represent God. And then, you know, this last one is just common sense, but being nice and kind to each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like um, something that um, I can just remember, you know, on the spot is like choosing love over fear because now we are merging our life together and there's so much things that... um, um, I mean, like we know each other a lot uh, for, you know, over more than a year. And um, I know it's not too long, but we share a lot of deep connection um, and deep conversations. But still, like there's some spot of a part of me when I was like, OK, I have to be very vulnerable in front of him and share about my feeling. And I'm not. How do I say it? I'm not. um it's not easy for me to share my feeling, you know. Mm-hmm. But at the again, again, I was like, "Hey, we agreed to choose love over fear. I cannot just assume and fear the outcome 
of his reaction, but I need to choose love um, between us. And um, it's, it's, it's hard. It is re- hard. It's hard to be vulnerable. <laughs> I remember that um, it took me a couple of weeks to like address him certain things that bothering me, uh, bother me, and then um, and then I remember. Uh, okay, I remember one thing that uh, I it's hard for me to believe that he loves me a lot. Like he Drake, we usually is like I love you with all my heart. That is extreme for me. <laughs> Usually people was like, oh, I love you. I love you back. But for him, it was like, Ruby, I love you with all my heart. It's like, and my, my usually response would be, okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, what do you mean? You're supposed to say something back. <laughs> so. Yeah, words of affirmation <laughs> for the love languages, you know. Yeah. So um, again, so, you know, sometimes it's, is is remind me like why do I why did I feel um uncomfortable to say it back like and then slowly some of the thoughts come to my mind you know all the wound um from the past experience and then I have to share so now is my is my job to share with him because he he wouldn't know you know so I share with him hey the reason I have a hard time um not that I don't love you. I love you a lot, but it, there's, there's still a hard time for me to um, to face with the wound, the past wound. And then I I have to share with him and and confront it and and and, and accept that love. So um, so by doing that, I learn to be choose. How, what does that mean to choose love over fear? And you have to know what is the fear that you're facing and remove it with love. You know and um, and I think that's also good for our, and then, you know, vice versa, he will do the same. He will share things that he's struggling with. And, and you know, um, that's just a great opportunity to connect. And um, that will be something that as we learn together in that journey, I think we can pass it on to the children um, later on. Like, what does it look like to, to choose love over fear? And we can, you know, share a little bit with the children um, we like this is how we can walk them through choosing love over fear. Yeah, I think particularly uh, like for the man, it can be really challenging to um, definitely yeah to, to like- admit your fears, to admit that you're afraid, to admit that you're scared. Um, and and you know, there's a healthy balance to it. You don't want to be like a chicken to your <laughs> wife and you know put that burden on her because you know I think you know, maybe more traditionally that like that's your role as the man is to take on, you know, like the dirty jobs, <laughs> you know, and take care of them and do it without complaint. But every now and then you have to kind of let your wife know or you're, if you're dating and you're starting to get serious with somebody like, hey, these are things that are that make me afraid or these are things that... um you know, even if there were fears that you overcame in the past, they might be helpful to um, share with your with your spouse or, you know, your girlfriend and share with them like, hey, this is something that I used to be afraid of. Uh, and this is how I overcame that fear. Or, you know, it still bothers me a little bit, but not as much as it used to. You know, things, whatever it is that, you know, happened. But, um, you know, it doesn't have to always be like relationship oriented. Just so mm-hmm. that you, your spouse understands like more about you, your vulnerabilities, and you know, like I said, you have to do it like in moderation. You can't, you don't want to be, you know, like afraid of your own shadow. But if that, if those are concerns and fears that you have, you want to be open. You know, like we talked about being honest, and um, you know, you never know. Like you might have a, a point of connection and a point of. Um, conversation that your spouse is like went through something similar or is going through that and you're you're able to connect and have a deeper understanding of each other and where you're coming from Mm -hmm. and I think it's this beautiful uh things to do to share together because imagine that you know that wound and that heart is so personal that you wouldn't be able be able to share with anyone um for me I would share with God but that's it but then 
Now you get to share with another human and you trust so much and you allow them to go so deep into your heart and remove it with that fear with love. And I know it's hard. It took us like a couple of weeks, even month um, to go over and over again. And sometimes, sometimes Drake was like frustrated with me because I'm like, Ruby, I told you that I love you with all my heart. Why would you ask me again and question that? Like, do you don't like you don't believe it or not? Like, and I have to tell, I have to tell him like, hey, I heard you, I listened to you, but it take a couple like times for me to like take it in, to to for me to undo or like renew my mind with with that new concept. So be patient with me and I need to hear it often. And I say, okay, if, if that's what you need, sure, I can do that for you. And I think that's just very a good support, you know, system that, you know, two people can do for each other. And this is journey is beautiful because from just go allow that person to go that deep and, and be, and now from, 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 from that moment on, I no longer have that fear but it removed, it got removed, but it replaced with the, the solid love that, that Drake had for me. And now be, be, instead of fear, I have a security and love on that spot. So I think that is very a beautiful spot and beautiful things to do. And especially with children, you know, like they, they may fear something, but as the parent, you know, if, you, if we know how to walk ourselves with, you know, choosing love over fear, then we can help our children to face that and say, hey, I understand what does that mean. I've been there. Let me help you to walk you through. And and I think that is a beautiful skill that you can pass it on to your children because now they know how to walk it through. And every time they they facing fear, they know how to walk themselves, you know, slowly to, or to overcome it. And I think that's a powerful skill that you can pass it on. Yeah, I think, you know, you're keeping all those things into consideration, like just how we were talking about before, where, you know, these are our family, cult- this is our family culture that we intentionally set up. And, you know, and r- earlier Ruby was talking a lot about, you know, the the setting up of this culture, really being intentional about it, really setting these things up, and then like going from theory into practice. And, you know, kind of reminded me about like, the saying about war, like, or, or, or not just war, it's like a, like a fight mm-hmm. um, where each battle plan has its own plan until, you know, or you get punched in the face, like pretty much like you have a fight, you have a game plan for your fight, like for boxers until they get punched in the face. And then the game plan kind of goes out the window and now they have to adjust on the fly and, you know, and more react. And that's, that's not exactly like how it is with, when, when in a relationship, but mm-hmm. The reality does happen when the rubber meets the road. And now, okay, we're really living together. We're really sharing all of our responsibilities and all of our our life uh, events, everything all together. And it might have gone a little bit differently in your head than it is happening, but nevertheless, having a plan and having talked about it ahead of time really does help. The same way every boxer has a game plan, even though they know that once the fight happens that they're going to have to adjust. But Mm -hmm. there's something maybe at least psychological about having a plan that when you do go to to doing your life together for real, it might not go exactly as planned, but at least you talk through it and you have somewhere to go through. So that's something that we would really encourage um, new, young, old long established couples to keep uh, revisiting is, you know, what is their family culture? How are you established? How is, was it established? How is it going? Are the things that you want to change? Are the things that you want to see that aren't being seen? And then how are you, what are you doing in protecting it? Um, Because I know that like for us, one of the main things I think that helped us maybe like almost inadvertently was, when we first got married, we spent a lot of time just together alone. And a lot of that is because for me, I'm a transplant, like because I, my, my family isn't really here, you know, and my work family, my, my coworkers, like after work, we don't really want to see each other. 
<laughs> that much. Or maybe it's me with them, but I'm not really sure. But in any event, like I go home, and I kind of just hang out by myself or with my bandmates. And, um, you know, with Ruby, she has some fr- family here, but not as much as she has back in her home country. So all these things together, I think like, you know, we, we realize like, hey, all this time that we're spending together is really helping us protect what's ours. And it's, you know, I think maybe something that a lot of people might struggle with, especially if you have all these family members, friends that are like, hey, let's go out and get drunk. Let's go out and do this. Let's go out and do that. And that, you know, you want to maintain a balance of hanging out with your friends and family, of course. Yes. But you also have to keep in mind, like, what is, is what I'm doing impacting our family culture negatively or positively? You know, and maintaining that because there's always room for fun. There's always room for going out and and maintaining that social connection that you have with other people. But just always checking in again and being like, how is this affecting our family life? Mm -hmm. Are we like, are we growing together? You know, Um, one more thing that I also think of, um, you know, like when you mentioned that if we don't have a plan in general in our lives, Period. You know, if you don't know what you're doing with these spots of their free time, someone else, maybe your friends, your family will, will do it for you. You can say, hey, let's go get boba. I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't have anything to do. Like, let's do it. You know, instead of intentionally that um, <laughs> we're talking about getting boba. She, <laughs> she, boba got up like, oh, boba, that's me. <laughs> you're talking about me? You have something for me? <laughs> um Anyways, um, so again, when we mentioned about so of family members, because we both coming from different uh, culture, different family style, upbringing style. Um, so we we we, know, we talk about normal before, but our normal and our new normal look like when we merge. But now this is exciting things that family will come in and you know telling us the tradition, the culture, the things that they want to pass on to us and they, they would love to see us to pass on to our children. How are we going to balance it? How are we going to yeah. do to keep it healthy and keep it boundary just to still known at the, more, the you know, yeah, more Martinez, but still like we're not it, bluntly say, no, we don't do anything with you guys, you know? So how are we going to do it? Yeah, it's a good question. It, it has come up with us a lot um, <laughs> yeah. lately. So our next episode, well, we're going to talk a little bit more about like what it is that sparked all of this conversation. But let's just say that um, for now, just so that we can maintain our on topic, mm-hmm. is that it always brings me back to this, uh, you know, in, in my faith we have, or the faith that I grew up with, rather, the the Greek Orthodox Church is we have a, a, a we had a priest who always had a really great way of in making analogies, and you know just like how Jesus spoke in parables, you know, or delivered his messages rather in parables. This priest was really really gifted in using analogies, and he said something to the effect of, "You want your mind to be like a sieve. You know that there's three types three types of minds. There's the sponge, the rock, and then the sieve." And the sponge soaks everything up, good and bad. This, the rock, nothing can get through to the rock. Um, but the sieve captures what's good and then lets all of the bad stuff pass through. You know, um, Something to that effect. And it's a very powerful... Just like eating the, the meat and spit out the bones. Yeah, yeah, just like that. So it's a very um, effective way of thinking about, you know, take... Yes, especially in terms of like our family cultures, where we come from. And um, yes, taking and honoring the traditions and the family heritage that we have, but also having the courage to look at them honestly and say, these things I'm not going to do. I love you, mom. I love you, dad. I love that this is your way of your way of doing things. But as time has gone on and the way that I've discussed this with my wife is we're not going to do these thing, this thing in particular because this contradicts With our family norms. norms and our family traditions that we are setting up for ourselves. And, you know, 
That's why I think a lot of like what they talk about in the Bible is very effective when it talks about that the family unit starting with the husband and wife, that the man leaves mm-hmm. his family yeah. and takes his wife and now it has, and creates a new. So you have to have the courage, especially as the husband, to look and say, yes, mom, yes, dad, I understand. I understand that, you know, <laughs> like uh, one of the things that, that lead it with that we don't really like to, that we don't want to keep on in our family in terms of like the Greek culture is, um, you know, in the Greek culture, they have this thing called like the evil eye. And it's like this weird looking like blue eye. And it's supposed to like ward off like evil spirits and things like that. And I always thought like, even as a young kid, like it's just silly. Like, I don't understand how this, this little stone is supposed to like, you know, keep away evil spirits. You know, and my mom would put it on me on like a necklace or on a bracelet. And I'd be like, I don't want this this silly thing. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to put it somewhere. You know, I always like wearing my cross, but, you know, not the the little like evil eye things. If you look, if you if you Google them, Greek evil eye or Orthodox evil eye, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, you know, that's like one example of like a tradition that like we're just like not going to have in our home. So it's a little uncomfortable to go up to my mom and be like, hey, can you, you know, not bring those things into our home because we don't want them. Or, you know, you know, just being a little bit more diplomatic and polite about it, but something to that effect. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, back to like our norm for family culture is like be kind and nice to um, people, including parents. And um, I know like, Parents only want to pass on things, you know, from, um, from the culture and tradition, which is they don't want to be all the things that, you know, um, got lost, you know, and, and they want it passing on. We totally understand. We know. But again, w- one of uh, the, the thing that we talk about family culture is that we represent God. So we always have to go back um, to the word of God. Like, is that how God represent, like, uh, am I represent God well in that, you know, in my faith, strong in the word of God, or I put a, my, my faith in somewhere else and just explain that to them. I know it's, again, Asian, we just do body gesture and facial, you know, um, gestures more than the word. But I think the speaking out from our heart I know it's hard because I was there and it's weird to um to even like voice it out and thoughts and feelings to to parents and and like constantly remind them hey I love you I'm not against you but this is my choice and please respect that and please um this is this is family culture that we are trying to be on and we are we appreciate you that you're trying to pass on things that you think that is so valuable, but this is gonna be our is this our turn yeah. <laughs> to 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 pass it on and and we will do our best to see what is the best for our children. And of course, I mean like we love our culture, we love the food, we love the traditions, we love that. It's not something that is just anything that not you know. Yeah, go just along. like that being a sieve. You yeah. take what's good and you just have not, to turn away what's bad. Yeah, just not something that, you know, not go along with the the, you know, the word of God. Then that's something that, you know, that's a red flag. But the rest, I'm like, sure, why not? Mm-hmm. So, yes. I was talking to my friend, I mean, I'm going to share with Drake, that in our culture, um, we don't have a ba- baby shower, baby, uh, what is that? Baby re- gender review, no, nothing. But we have a big thing in terms of, you know, passing on culture. We have a celebration for the first month and then the one month. Um, the first birthday of the baby is huge. And then on the first birthday, um, we have a tray in front of us. And then we have t- different objects like scissors, ruler, um, hammer, um, camera. Like they... they each item represent a career or even money <laughs> represent career that the banker, <laughs> banker. <laughs> investor I don't know 
to for, represent the um, the career in the future, and then of course the, all the parents want to have will maneuver <laughs> the the trade that the baby can pick up the money because they want you know, the baby to be rich. So it was a fun a uh, tradition or culture that you pack and pass on. You know that's fine. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean like that's what we are talking about. I mean as long as Drake and I be on the same page. And you guys and you and your partner on the same page. I think that's the most empower, powerful thing because you know the unity is the best things that you can you know have for your family. Yeah, and it's not just family that can you know derail or offset your family cult, your family culture, and your family norms that you've set up. You know, as your family, you know, with your family unit, your you know, you husband, wife, um, children. You know, it could also be friends and. And, um, you know, we just want to politely tell our friends and also evaluate who are our friends. You know, do we have lots of, you know, do we need to make new friends who are, um, you know, in network and socialize with people who have all like in similar stages of their lives where, you know, where they're having children, you know, certain age group and like, how can we meet these people? Um, Because if you have friends, if you're a married couple, you know, and all your friends are single and, you know, going to Vegas every weekend, then, you know, that can cause some, um, some, some rift, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, in other words, like you can't really be having single bachelor behavior um, and norms when you're married and you have a married, you know, culture. Um, you know, if going to Vegas together is part of your family, you know, your tradition where like we go to Vegas like every other weekend, you know, we play the slots, we have fun together. You know, that's another thing. But, you know, I think from what I've heard as a lot of from a lot of couples who do have these complaints is, you know, the husband or the wife is going out partying, going out drinking, going out with friends, you know, all the time or spending a, a great deal of their free time doing these activities instead of doing date nights, instead of connecting at home, um, going on an engaging walk, which is why we really advocate the engaging walk. Going out together and just doing something simple like walking can really, really boost that connection. And, um, you know, just like us a little while ago, we we just had to leave the house. You know, we went to church earlier, uh, we took a nap, (laughs) <laughs> and then we were like, all right, well, let's leave the house. And, you know, we ended up finding a great new boba spot in our new, in our new neighborhood. Yeah. So um, doing these activities together really creates that family culture, that family bond. And, um, and you know, and just doing life together in that sense creates um, a, a deep and enduring friendship. You know, mm-hmm. I can honestly say that Ruby is my best friend. Woo-woo. You know, um, <laughs> and that's a that's a a great thing when you have your partner as your as your best friend because you know I've had bosses in the past where I'm like that guy does not want to go home, <laughs> <laughs> you know that guy is not looking forward to going home. You can just tell. And then I've also had bosses, you know, in the military, you know, bosses who did not want to go home, and I had bosses who do want to go home. And you're like, yeah, I want to go home. My family's waiting for me, my, my kids. You know, they have just more urgency, more um, intention behind their work. You know, that's not saying that they're lazy. They get the same things accomplished. They just have more of a purpose because they know that they have people waiting for them. So they're not sitting down like on their phone, like hanging out, just doing, you know, they're very intentional with their time. And that's what we want to be. We want to be... Um, you know, doing our work at at work as well, but hey, you know, let's I'm gonna do this, that, and the other thing, and go home, um, and then take care of business at home too. So all of that I think plays together in terms of um, maintaining and protecting your family culture. You know, because if you're staying late at home from work because you know you don't want to go home, well, that's that's not fair because like we've talked about in many episodes and in and everyone can relate to this is there's lots of things that can be done at home. There's lots of opportunities to, to grow and, and be together and to be a family. And it takes effort. It takes intention. And what else do you think? 
it, yeah, I, I agree with what you said, like intentional. And um, when you have someone as, you know, like to look for forward to go home with and um, to support, I think this is a, so such a great safe place to grow together. And um, I think that's a great, also a great spot for children as well, because that's what I need. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think we've, we've gone over into quite some detail about like how uh, we would like to, you know, we and our family maintain our family culture, protect with boundaries, um, you know, from fan, friends, family, work. And um, so this, uh, this is a really p- uh, powerful and really endearing um, aspect, I think, for us at least in terms of like family culture. And I know that is, you know, like, um, I'm, this is never st- end, and, you know, we'll stop here when we finish the, the episode. It's just like sharing with you guys things that, you know, working for us and matter for us most so that it's just inspiring you to, to start with your, you know, and with your implement or practicing protecting your boundaries and share with us the story because you know you, we may we can learn from you guys too mm-hmm. and um definitely and you know we learn together because we are a community that we aim for healthy uh and strong marriage and also family and i think at this time family is just so for me entering into marriage and then also creating a family it's just so beautiful and powerful when two people understand the value and, and, and commit to that and, and, and willing to work and to find for whatever that they believe in, which is the culture that, you know, we just talking about is, is it's just so pretty and so beautiful to walk, walk through. And it's not easy. It's never easy, but it's worth so much more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I think for me, like the most rewarding thing I've ever done is, is have this family and, um, you know, with my wife, our dog and uh, in additions. So that's what we look forward to. That's what we, we love and, and we cherish. So I know that for many of you people out there that must, that are probably on the fence or like, you know, of course you always want to find the right person, um, to, to do life with because you, you are going to be doing life together. But once you do have that confidence that you know I found the right person and you've gone through, you know, maybe in the future we could talk about, like, how, how do you know? <laughs> this is the right one. This is the right one. <laughs> That's his ultimate question. <laughs> <laughs> how do you know? But once you know and you're confident and you can go forward and all these things have been confirmed, it's, a, it's the best walk you're ever going to go on in your life. And even with the right person, it's never stop all the intentions and planning and Boba looks super cute right now. <laughs> She's on the stairs looking at us like, <laughs> it's time for bed. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I would, would talk, uh, side side talk. She, if she tired and she look at us and like, you guys going to work down here? Okay, fine. I'm going to just walk my chef to my crate and go in there and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> she's sleeping on the stairs right now. She's like, I'm sleepy. Good night. Yeah, she's super cute. Um, so let's go over our assignment for this week. So for this week, I think one of the, th- before you can protect, you have to know what's the threat. So I want you and your significant other, or rather be your wife, your husband, um, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, mm-hmm. and identify what is the biggest threat to your family, um, your family culture. And it doesn't have to be a like an existential threat. It just has to be like the most probable way that you and your cult, your culture that you've established or that you're working on can be derailed. It can go off off into a different direction that you discussed is like the, the, the right way for you guys to live together. So identify that. It could be um, you know, habits. It could be like spending too much time at work. Um, you know, and then coming up with uh, new, you know, hey, work, we, you, know, you know that you have to work. Everyone's got to work. But again, as to, like going in, are we using our time effectively? Um, habits, you know, things like smoking, um, drinking too much, 
uh, are the, are these areas of our lives or thing or habits that we have um, relationships, you know, with friends, family, coworkers, that is a threat to our our way of life. Mm-hmm. Identify them and find ways to mitigate that threat. Yeah. Again, like we not us against people, you know, it just like, how do you protect again, protect um, your family culture that you agree on upon and how do you protect them? Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's situation is different. Just by identifying the threat doesn't mean that you deal with it the same way, like eliminate the threat. No, it could be mitigating. You can identify like, hey, my brother every week, so this is not the case with us, but this is just an example. Uh, my brother every week needs money from, you know, because he's bad with money, whatever the case may be. I still love my brother. I'm still going to take care of him and support him. But giving him money every week is not really dealing with the issue correctly. Pro- you know, and, and your spouse is like, hey, we can't really afford to be giving your brother money so that he can go buy, you know, lottery tickets or whatever the situation is, you know. Um, and identify what the what the problem is, the threat to the to the family culture, and mitigate it. Say, hey, bro, I love you, um, but th- you know uh, this is the last week that I'm going to be able to give you money. And then you always go back to your family culture. You know that's that is your blueprint. Like, hey, is this giving? And I go back to the example. If that's giving to my, uh, I'll. A brother or my bro- my brother in law um, constantly that am I helping him to grow or mm-hmm. am I choosing love over fear? You know, oh, yep. just give it to him. You know, it's fine. Is are you fearing of something or is it chewing love? Is it you know? Um, we're there to help family. That's mm-hmm. what we're all about. But yeah. if this is just enabling a bad, bad behavior or yeah. um, something that's not really helping. You know, then we have to reevaluate it and then find, hey, this is a problem for us in our culture. Let's find a way to mitigate it. Let's find a way to actually help him as opposed to enabling him. Are you showing up as, um, you know, communicate honestly with him or we just, you know, um, just give all the money so that we can move on? You know, so like that is where whatever situation that you're facing with, that is the opportunity for your family to shy the culture that you are want to establish. Mm-hmm. So again, this is, uh, you know, it can be delicate. It can be um, different for everybody, but find, but, you know, think deeply and find what that, um, just Boba, she definitely fell asleep. She's on the stairs being all cute. My wife's going to take a picture now, so we'll post it on the Engaging Walk um, <laughs> Instagram. And uh, so take a look out for that. But, you know, I think if you can identify and think honestly and carefully about like what poses a threat to who we are trying to be as a couple and cr- think of creative, effective ways to deal with problems that get to the heart of the matter, then it's a great exercise that you can just do repeatedly because it's not going to just be one thing. It's not going to just be, it's going to be like whack-a-mole. You know, as you go through life, there's going to be more things that pop up, more things that pop up. And we have to think of creative, effective ways to deal with them. That's And, and that's like the main priority of established. Once we have all of our norms established, we have to protect them. We have to protect what's ours. And, um, you know, so with that, let's... Um, Let's, uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off. But before we do, we want to remind you guys that we you know, we have uh, this photo that we're going to be posting on Instagram. So make sure you go <laughs> on there and check us out on Engaging Walk. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Uh, follow. We all, you can also find us on Facebook. And if you're listening on uh, Apple, Spotify, make sure you can also check out our or wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us on YouTube. And if, you, and if you know anyone like your friends, your family members, or even, you know, just your, whoever, your coworker that are looking for a relationship, and, you know, fi- if you find us helpful, you can share with your friends and your family members. So thank you for that. And thank you so much again for listening and also um, 
spend this moment with us. We appreciate you guys. Yeah, we thank you very much. And um, with that, we are going to be signing out. Um, so thank you for tuning in to Engaging Walk. My name is Drake. And my name is Ruby. And we are signing out. Thank you. Bye.